The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Hello, hello. And we back for one more show of Deeple Topics. On the other side, I have Sony Fernandez and our friend uh, John Sylvia. How are you guys doing? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, Even the dog is saying Happy New Year. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, my neighbor, my neighbor is getting home. So as soon as he sees a, a car outside, that's it. Um, John, um, Sony, it's not a, a, a strange fa uh, face. You nope. probably nope. recognize her from uh, um, the studio and and uh, from from our famous trip to Portugal. Absolutely, yeah. Our yes. <laughs> she was the one that did something that I lived there for 21 years. I go there a lot and now what they had to do. <laughs> is to rent a scooter and go all the way to Set Cidade in the scooter. Oh, oh it was cool. beautiful. <laughs> place. I, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know how she got she got her all the way there, but I guess she did. Muy <laughs> loco. Yeah, muy do it. Um so we um Last week, um, uh, Sony joined our Portuguese show, and we were talked about the vaccines and the difference um, that between the two vaccines. Uh, Sony is a nurse, so um, if we probably could get we can learn something from her. Uh, uh, Sony, uh, you did um, you got your vaccine uh, yesterday. So how are you feeling? I actually got the Moderna one yesterday and uh, I have had a lot of requests for me to actually, uh, if uh, the, everybody was asking me, please, you know, when you get it done, uh, make sure you share your experience with us because it looks mm -hmm. like a lot of people are f fearing because yes. of the variety of uh, fake news and um, how people uh, trust or mistrust uh, information that are out there. So reality is, I had it yesterday. Uh, I have the, the the shot itself was not that big deal. It's less painful than the flu shot. It's yes. a smaller needle. It's a thinner needle. So it went in, it's like nothing, not even a, a bee sting. Uh, and then I had no symptoms whatsoever and uh, not even runny nose, no fever, no mal malaysia, like not even fatigued. I was more <laughs> tired for doing the 12-hour shift than from anything else. <laughs> well, but guess what? I, I think you're supposed to start turning green, right? Uh, I'm still waiting to become a zombie. Oh, or oh, an alien. <laughs> um, the the bad news, well, it's comforting that I was able to get the first shot. And mm -hmm. uh, people have to remember that the only one shot is not enough. So uh, my body, in this case, is building immunity, but I'm not 100% protected yet. So I have to wait until... Uh, uh, January 26, so 28 days, three to four weeks. So uh, on the 26, I'm going to have the second shot. And after the second shot, I'm going to be 70 to 95% protected. So it's better than nothing, that's for sure. In the meantime, obviously, I'm going to be doing what I have been doing so far because I haven't, uh, you know, I have been very fortunate. And I haven't got exposed yet by washing my hands, wearing masks, and doing what you got to do. Uh, and 
praying. <laughs> well, Sonny, uh, can, can I ask you a question? So if uh, I know in hospitals, if you don't take the flu vaccine, you can wear a mask. Are they requiring you to get that, that it's mandated, or is it still at the employee's discretion? Uh, at the federal government, it varies from organization to organization. But where, where you work for the feds, are they it's required? mandated. Flu okay. vaccine is mandated. The COVID, okay. because it's so new, yep. is not mandatory. Okay. Unfortunately, right. not mandatory because... Okay. It's new, and we don't know a hundred percent too much about it. So yeah, and I, I I was talking to Carlos last week on the show, and I know that there have been folk people that have, and I've read some stories um, mm-hmm. about uh, basically it's um, it's not DNA. I know there's a lot out there that they say they're putting DNA into people. They're not doing that. What they're doing is they're what they're doing is tricking your DNA. Um, to accept uh, this, you know, coming into you and basically you gathering immunity. Do I have that right? or uh, it, It's not really your DNA because your DNA lives inside of the nu- nucleus of every cell that we have in our body. Okay. And people become scared because what the scientists are using is part of a protein that you find on the virus itself that is called close to DNA. It's not really DNA, it's the RNA, which is a protein that's utilized. So it has nothing, and it triggers our immune system, not our DNA. Yeah, but this is the first time this has been used, this sort of thing, this is the first time. It's been used, right? Uh, more, uh, not really, because it has been used. That's what they do in every in in every immunization uh, vaccine, like the flu vaccine. That's what they use. It's a protein from the variety of flu virus that there are out there in okay. specific year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I w- it's interesting. Like uh, it's it's interesting that I, I wanted to ask the question about whether it's mandated because. We're seeing all these things coming out now that there's going to be a COVID passport where you're not going to probably be able to leave the country or you're not going to be able to go into concert venues without having this vaccine. And to me, that's something, you know, this is the U.S. Um, We have a constitution that, you know, we're free. And when I hear these things that you can't go to concerts or to other countries or maybe even on planes, that scares me a little bit. I think it scares a lot of Americans. Um, so it's good to know that that at least not mandating it at work, um, because like somebody like me, I have allergies. They say not to not to take it if you have allergies. Um, so I don't, you know, may, maybe you could educate me on that then. <laughs> uh, actually, don't you think that if you have allergy, you are in a higher risk than someone that doesn't have allergy? Um, I, you know, I. I haven't, I've taken the flu vaccine once in my life. It was back in 1986. Never have taken that. I try not to take things that I think are, you know what I mean, going to later on harm you. Because in 10 years, we don't really know what's going to happen with, this is kind of a new thing. So in 10 years, we don't know if there's ever, you know, some kind of effects that might happen with folks. We will learn about it as time goes on. So I think that's where people are a little concerned with this as well. I mean, somebody like me, I'm older, but like a kid that's maybe 25, 30, he has his whole life or she has his whole life in front of them. And we seem to find out 10 years later that, oh, if, if you were taking this certain drug or doing this, you know, the, the uh, lawyers are coming out telling you, you know what I mean? So I think that's where some concerns are, you know. Oh, I respect your concerns, but it's very, it's unfortunate because... Um, you're not alone having that kind of thought uh and because people generally tend to be skeptical about uh, science and uh we defer towards we become defensive everything that's new obviously is scary but we become defensive 
instead of uh, having, not that I'm saying that you, you don't have open mind, you have every right to, you know, and I respect where you're coming from. But when you said that um, we are free, are we really free? Because if I have a disease that's, a con that's contagious, that means I'm not free. I'm going to be affected unless I live alone in an island. I'm not free because if I have, I am going to be infecting you. And knowing that doesn't make me, doesn't give me the freedom to go to your house anytime I want if I have the disease. And as your friend, as, as a, a, a person that has a conscience, I don't think I'll feel good knowing that I am infected and I'm, uh, I have something that is infectious and it's going to cause you harm, especially if you are at higher risk by having already respiratory issues. Do, do you see where I'm coming from? I, I, I see where you're coming from. I look at this, though. Anybody under like age 50, there's a zero, zero, zero point one percent of death. You know, as you get older, it's a little bit different. We're taking a vaccine that has a 95% effective rate. I wish so, I could agree with you. Okay. Um, I I don't think my friend who is 33 that died would agree with you. But there's always going to be cases like that. But the majority of people that have died are over 80 years old. Well, you have 200,000. Yeah, and that's the part that I don't agree with. Just because it's one in a million that's going to die, that's still a person that died. Exactly. And, and that life could be, that person could stay alive if people uh, follow, you know, and, and, and don't they put that person in. And in, 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 because that person was alive and was not sick. He got that from somebody. So, I, I mean, with this, when people say this, oh, it's only zero, 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 it doesn't matter. Even if it's one person that died from COVID-19, even if it's one person, it's not right. So that person, you know, could stay alive if uh, the prevention was, uh, uh, the per person had uh, prevented. And, and John, remember that if we don't all get at least over 75% vaccinated, it's not going to work. It's a pandemic. The, 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 the horse is out of the barn. Mm -hmm. If people are still thinking, oh, I, I have the freedom to do whatever I, I want with my body. Well, I have been dealing with this nightmare since April. I have been seeing people dying very close to me. Like I have been taking their blood pressure, they're taking their, seeing their struggle for their breath. All right. Mm -hmm. well, I, yeah. I totally agree with you. I know I, I lost a family member from this, so I get it. Um, but I know that there's a lot of, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people would probably think the way I, number one, this all started out with not getting the correct information out. So they told us at first, don't wear masks, don't worry about it. Then it's wear masks. You know, then now we're hearing asymptomatic people where we told before they were contagious. Now we're hearing they're not contagious. So I, I think there's so much um, wrong information that when you start hearing things, you don't know what to believe anymore. You really don't. You know, and I, I think that's been but, part but, of this. But here's, here's the difference. Yes. This still, this still in every country, they still have it. They, the problem is their numbers are low and our numbers, it's very high because, well, I, and I, I think that's what, I, and I think that's the difference. It's because we never talk this serious. No, we that, never, no, Carlos, you know, you know what I think it is. First of all, I just heard a statistic the other day, 71% of the young people in this country are not eligible to enter the US military. And mm -hmm. a lot of that is due to health reasons. So we have a higher majority of people in this country that are overweight, are not in good shape. And if you look at these other countries, it's not the case. 
mm-hmm. you know, the countries down in South America, Africa is another place that they don't have the death rate of the contagion rate that we have here. So I think that's a, been a big problem here in the U.S., along with the U.K., that we're not in shape. And at Sony, 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 you can probably tell me if I'm right or wrong what, what you've seen with that. But I think that's been a big part of that. And I think we do, do an over, overwhelming amount of testing. We've tested almost two thirds of the whole population in this country. Um, I disagree because, well, yeah, okay, we tested, but guess what? We have not tested uh, for the right things. And John, remember, uh, uh, any virus, whether it is COVID or whether it is um, polio, whatever, any virus that's, <laughs> that's found in, in, in nature, it's very intelligent and it's mutating. So obviously we have a pandemic of um, lung disease, of um, diabetes, heart disease, cholesterol, so many other problems that are really, really troub- troublesome. And now on top of everything, COVID and yes. malnutrition and uh, addiction. So you can go on and on and on. Finding excuses and finding justifications for why we're not taking this seriously. Uh, bottom line is because our opinions are so diversified and because we tend to turn this into a political bullshit, we're not going to find solution. It's going to get worse because the virus are going to mutate. And then what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, and I agree with you. I, and I believe, you know, this is part of what I found. You're right. Other countries don't have the politicalization of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had people saying that they weren't going to take the vaccine. Now, all of a sudden today, they're taking the vaccine. It's amazing. So mm-hmm. it's hard to get people to really think about this. And I hope the next administration, it really cuts out all the baloney that they, that they have been performing for the last year because they have really made this a political issue as well. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you this. doesn't matter what side, what side you are. If you, the doctor says you're going to die tomorrow, you die tomorrow unless you take this pill. Okay? doesn't matter what you had said on the past. You're going to take the pill or you're going to die tomorrow. Well, Carlos, so, I, I agree with you. However, I think that's what's going on. It's, however, people however, say, say, say stuff, you, but then when they get the problem, they have to take a position. Well, well, let me just say this. And they want to save their life. Uh, let me just say this and I'll let Sunny come in. When you have the future president and future vice president three months ago saying, I'm not taking that vaccine, there's a little bit of blame there as well. Oh, so, God, yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's, that's the problem. I, and that's why I'm, I think a lot of people are skeptical. And that's why I'm glad well, Sonny, that I'm talking to you because it's going to make me, and I think other people that see this, kind of maybe think about it or change their mind. Because you're somebody mm-hmm. that I've met, I, you know, so, spoke with for about, you know, a week when we were away. So I trust you, you know. But mm-hmm. I think there's so much misleading crap out there and I'll leave it at that and let you talk. <laughs> it, it, it is so sad that, unfortunately, like you said, there's so many misleading information out there. Bottom line is the vaccine is the only only big resource that we have for any disease, any, any, any um, infection. A, a virus you don't kill with antibiotic only bacteria. Once a virus is in your organism, it's going to cause you harm. Yes, a lot of people have different immunity and, and, and they have a different diet. They have, it, it, it's going to act in a very different way from person to person. But at 52 years old, you think I'm going to wait to see how it's going to affect me? I mean, I am very cautious what I eat, I exercise, I do everything right, I don't smoke, I don't drink, only when I go to Portugal, but <laughs> guess what? I am going to take the vaccine, I'm going, I already took the first one, and I, I will, I'm looking forward to the second one to be 100% protected, and I'm yeah, uh, so thankful for the, 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 the scientists to actually have 
a, a solution that is better than nothing. You know, we uh, have uh, wasted way too much time already. Uh, Sony, uh, and because it's two vaccines, we did we did talk this on on our Portuguese show, but I want this show people that listen to this show to to know this information we have two different vaccines and we have one that needs to be uh, needs to be uh, taken cold and we have one that is not so can you explain to us the difference between the two vaccines and and if you will have if you will have um a choice to take one over another which one that you will take the ones that the government is already giving to the first line, which is uh, in the in the critical most critical person, it's phase one right now. Uh, and remember, it's just the first dose. We're not not even near the the the, the We're just starting in the door. Um, and the only difference is the way we keep them. The Pfizer one. The only way, the only difference is uh, the, the, the way you keep them is in a colder temperature, minus 20, which poses a greater problem on transporting it and, and maintaining in the clinics. Like right now, CVS is giving and, and all the, the nursing homes are giving, all the hospitals are giving, but only for personnel and people at higher risk. Mm -hmm. uh, like my husband, he cannot have the vaccine through my work because he's not over 65. He's not first line. And the only difference in the two vaccine, Pfizer and Modern Moderna, is the way, the temperature, the way, the how the, uh, we keep them. And one, it, you can keep it in the refrigerator temperature. And the Pfizer has to be uh, ice, like a dry ice, and the temperature has to be minus 20. But, but how that how they made it, that's the difference, Tony, how they made it, how they got to the to the, the vaccine, they, they locked in two different places. Uh, that's what I think, yeah. because they have to be treated different. Yes, but, but uh, they're still using a protein from the coronavirus that's going to trigger our immunity to create antibodies that's going to protect us the next time we get exposed to the virus so they they that's basically the same mechanism so for those that say that i'm not going to take it because they're going to put the virus on me oh my god no so so that that's what believe it or not that's what i hear you know i mean that vaccine is they're going to put actually put the virus on me so i got it so i can get it done and that's it and that is another proof of how much misinformation is out there there are plenty of uh, easy to understand uh information on cdc and uh, CVS has a, a website that has CDC information about the vaccine. Uh, from the way it's uh, kept through the way it's going to be distribu distributed. Right now, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's not to the public yet. But you're going to be able to get at CVS. Also, just like the flu shot. Uh, flu shot, you can go to CBS right now without any appointment and just get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping that it's going to be like that for COVID vaccines. Uh, the problem is, uh, like even in my work, because of the polarization and uh, people thinking initially, like John, <laughs> sorry, John. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they are stopping from getting the vaccine. So the prediction that we had as far as keeping the virus down and remember just because you got the first dose you're not 100 percent protected you only 50. so you still have the 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 28 days that you are only 50 percent protected that's why it's so important to protect with like okay john yes if, if you were with another guy in front of you yep. and you're not wearing pants you're gonna pee on him okay 
I hope not. No. <laughs> if, if, the two of you, if the two of you are wearing pants, yeah. none of you are going to pee in yourself. You're, you're not going to pee in each other. You're yeah. going to pee I, in yourself. I get the thing with the virus. Yeah. If you have the mask, yeah. you're just going to infect yourself. You're not infecting somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I... I get it. I just, there's so many things. Like, I'll give you an example that I think sometimes this misinformation. So if you go to a gym in Massachusetts right now, right, and you go on the treadmill or on an elliptical, you have to wear a mask. I went in the other day. I saw that. I stayed for the half hour, and I'm, I'm not going back until that. So I think there's so many different things. I would think that it's probably worse to have somebody wear a mask that's going to run on a treadmill. <laughs> well, um, the virus survives because it survives in people yeah mm -hmm. and if people don't take care of themselves and each other it's going to be transmitting that's the bottom line if a person was affected and quarantine and now it's over the 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 two months should that person take the vaccine or wait longer? Oh, I, will, I if I was that person, I would definitely take it. Okay. The problem is you might not qualify yet, unfortunately. It's not out there for the public yet, you know. Yeah, no, I understand. That's but why it's so important to protect yourself because right now it's going up again because people are sick of, of being told what to do. And, you mm -hmm. know, they have rights, they do this, and they have misinformation. Oh, it's going to affect my DNA or whatever. In the meantime, it's it's spreading like wild wildfire. And mm -hmm. it's going to affect, it's already affecting so many lives uh, as far as economically, all, all, all around. You know, mm -hmm. I have people in Brazil saying this is a nightmare. It, 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 it's a it's a snowball. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so, uh, so many other diseases that we were able to eradicate. Why is this so different? Why is this being treated so different? And people making such a big deal about something that is so simple. Mm -hmm. The the virus utilize your body to make more virus. Well, mm -hmm. it's not animals that's spreading this. It's people. And mm -hmm. and if people are not conscious enough to realize that and they're free to do whatever they want and not take the right do the right thing i i i just don't know what to say mm -hmm. well um well i i you know sony i can say i appreciate um all your uh your insight on this and i i'd like to have you come back again definitely yes yeah. um just to give like an update because i i think this is really interesting and um you know it's we i we need to hear from people like you that are on the front lines that are taking the vaccine because again there's so much disinformation out there um that you don't even want to watch the news anymore <laughs> you know <laughs> it really is that sad so i think you know to have and this is what i've always wanted i want somebody to come on that doesn't have any kind of uh political agenda or any agenda just to say look people stop listening to all that crap and this is what it is you know mm -hmm. and you know i think people would be a little bit different but when you hear things that are not correct and you find out it just puts so many more questions there and i really appreciate you coming on today well, and I, I hope you come back was was a uh, was a surprise was a last minute i have to say it was a last minute but uh was uh very very nice and we are out of time uh we will come back next week i know you will be working next week but we definitely will be in touch and uh I promise you this year we're going to have a nice drink in Ponta del Gado. <laughs> Keep I thinking know. positive, but don't test positive, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Have a Thanks good night, so guys. Much. And happy. Bye.